You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for hitting that play button. This is another episode of the Dave Bullis Podcast. Not a lot to discuss before today's episode. I just want to say again, if you go to the actual page for, for this podcast at DaveBullis.com or if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on Podbean or, or Google Play Podcast, wherever you're listening to it at, there's a link to our the Facebook page for, for this group. It's a closed group, but it's actually slowly becoming bigger and bigger, which is what I've been trying to do, is to make a group that's different than every other group out there. It's all free, by the way. It's just a, a closed Facebook group. And um, I'm trying to get something different. I mean, I'm a part of a lot of different groups on Facebook, and most of them end up with a lot of infighting, a lot of, uh, you know, lack of, you know, just posts that, 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 that are very inflammatory, you know, all that other crap that you don't want to deal with. So if you want to go to a group that, that's free of uh, all the spam stuff, of all the crowdfunding campaigns, of all that good stuff, or bad stuff, I should say, then uh, it, the link's in the show notes. Again, it's a, a totally free group, and um, it's I, I've been doing a lot more and more with it, so feel free to, to apply to join, and I'll, I'll pretty much approve anybody. So without further ado, let's get to today's episode. Uh, my guest, my next guest, <laughs> is a screenwriter and director. Uh, his film, Love Liza, won the Waldo Salt Screening Award at the 2002 Sundance Film Festival. Uh, his other film, uh, Dog Bowl, will premiered at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival. Uh, we're going to talk all about uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, and uh, we're going to talk a little about Phantom Thread. We're going to talk about all that good stuff because this guest has, you know, been down the road a couple of times. And we're also going to talk about Obviously, the Blue Cat screenwriting competition, uh, which some deadlines are coming up, but I've also linked to those in the show notes. And also, all of the movies we talk about are in the show notes. Again, DaveBullis.com. Just remember that, so in case you <laughs> need it for later. But this is episode 202 with guest Gordy Hoffman. You're listening to the Dave Bullis Podcast. You know, uh, Gordy, I've actually you know followed you for a while. I've I've actually entered the Blue Cat a few times. Um, I, I've seen a few webinars. Uh, you know, not only is Blue Cat awesome, but but Gordy, you're kind of like the 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 guy that you want to learn writing from because you're so like good natured and you just like have that attitude. You know what I mean? Like you you just seem like you 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 not only know what you're doing, but but you know what I mean? Like it, it's that that you that you have the personality that sort of comes through. If you know what I'm trying to say. Well, I, you know, well, thank you. That's very, that's very sweet to say. And, you know, I learned uh, probably a long time ago that, um, you know, when I was directing and uh, when I got into teaching um, that, uh, you know, being loving and kind and courteous when you're talking to somebody about their stuff and trying to be, makes them more receptive. I mean, if you ultimately want to help people and serve them and give them some information and help them with their writing. You want them to be able to listen and hear what you're saying. And, um, you know, people get, you know, no one wants to be sort of get negative or sort of sh shaming or anything or like be denigrated or discouraged in a way. It is just, it shuts people down and they, they're not going to produce actors get net nervous crew gets, angry resentful they're not going to be but if you're kind of courteous and respectful when you're making a film and uh and when you're talking to people about their work um it's difficult sometimes to navigate that but it's something that we stress with our readers often you know we just say you know you got to be you're, you are talking to the reader when you're set you know writing up the notes and and um no one you know it's just natural it's just no one wants to People tend to shut down. They're not going to listen. They're not going to hear the notes if if they're delivered in a way. So over time, I think, um, you know, I'm just not the, you know, it's not really, I guess, it, you know, there's probably some higher ethical reasons why you should be good to nice to people, but it's also, it's also very practical. You know, it's also, it's also practical. If you want to actually tell a better story, then it's good to, um, collaborate and work with writers and work with your f fellow collaborators um, in, in a way that fosters that um, spirit so that they're relaxed and they feel, 
entitled in the work and um, excited. So, yeah. Don't want to crush people's spirits, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> crush their dreams, you know. It's just like, ugh. And it stays with you for years, you know. I mean, it's like it's not a good look. So, um, yeah. So I, I think it's just I think all anybody who likes to teach and has been teaching a while kind of learns that it's a it's a much more um, effective way to help a student, and that's what you want to do when you're teaching. So, you know, in your you know, journey, Gordy, you know, through through do- going to all these different, you know, uh, uh, places like, you know, like Sundance and going on to, you know, doing these webinars. And I mean, I- I'm sure you've met a ton of ton of people, you know. And-, and so, you know, having done all that, have you met screenwriting teachers who-, who are who are like that, who just give like these very like pain like these notes that are just like direct and to the point and, and very maybe even. Yeah, brash. I've heard I've heard. Yeah, I've heard of students go- going coming back and being like, Oh, you know, like are saying, you know, and I think some people just feel like that's, I mean, some people think that that, and you know, if, if, and I think some people maybe like that, I don't know. They like the, Oh, I need to be, I need someone to be tough on me, you know? And I guess that, but I've had a lot of good writers, talented people, people that are back have pretty good backbones. You know, people just fold, you know, when they do that, but yeah, absolutely. There's people that, because it's, you know what, it's easier to yell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's easier to just freak out on people. You know what I mean? It, the, the work of being a, 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 like a teacher and, or the, and the work of giving somebody effective notes that's struggling in their, with their story, the work of being a respected director, an effective director is, 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 being, is kind of being able to react with grace and be able to be respectful. It's so easy to be a jerk, you know, I mean, to just be like, why, what were you, you know, like whatever it is. And, um, but you know, the thing is I'm a writer, you know, and I'm, and I'm a filmmaker myself. And I think that's, that's why blue cat, I think has flourished, um, the way it has and grown the way it has. And, um, and I think that's what makes me an effective teacher as well, because I'm like, would I want to hear this? how would I want to hear notes? How would I want to hear this? Or like, what would I, what do I think would be fair? Um, and it, 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 you know, that having that perspective really helps. And I think some, maybe some teachers aren't, were never really writers or they haven't been writing for a long time and they, maybe it helps them slip. But most teachers, you know, I think a lot of really effective teachers, um, you know, approach it with a pretty even keel. I don't think you really hear a bunch of, you know, hear too much about lunatic people. I I just don't think that, I don't think that screamers really, (laughs) I mean, writing is such a personal um, action. You know, it's a very vulnerable thing. Um, All creative artistic pursuits, you know, it's like you're really opening yourself up you know, your instrument is your personal life. And, um, you know, it can, it can get a little hairy when somebody's coming after the writing because it feels like they're coming after you. So, yes. and you only know that, I think, if you mm, experience the process of writing yourself and you know how personal it is. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, th- that that's that thing, you know, how, how do you differentiate between the writing and yourself? Uh, you know, you hit the nail on the head right there because, you know, it, it's kind of like if you write a screenplay or a short story and you turn it in and the and the, the judges or the script consultant or whomever do, or, or, you know, the writer's group doesn't like it. It's you, you I mean, you feel like I, I've been there before. I, I feel like it's an assault on me, you know, and you're like, how dare you? Yeah. You know, and, and then you start, yeah, you start very- getting agitated. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's a good, it's a good professional, it's good exercise in professionalism to be like, you know, this is not about you. And, um, sometimes things are very personal and, you know, it feels like, Oh God, you know, and somebody's like, I think that character is a certain way and you thought differently and that might reflect on your values and it might reflect on your ethical, uh, you know, core, you know, and, and that can, it starts to feel like you're kind of getting, it's kind of like, Oh, you know, you, you think I'm a creep or you think I'm angry or you think I'm like, uh, you know, whatever, or you think I condone this or, you know, whatever. And, um, but professionals, I think, you know, I think it's a good, we all fall into that. And I think it's always good for me to remember that, you know, it's like, 
you know, this is a story. It, 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 you know, you're creating something. You're going to create more. You know, you're going to have a body of work. It's not you. It's not your life. It's, you know, and everything is so personal, the reactions from people. I mean, people are so – get so wound up with feedback sometimes, and it's just like, haven't you ever gone to a movie – with like people that you love, like your family or your best friends or your spouses or your partners or whoever. And you walk out and one person goes, I hated that. And the other person goes, God, I loved it. You know, and, and no one goes, Oh my God, we need to move out. You know, or, you know, there's no, it's, there's no big fallout. You know, it's sort of like, okay, yeah, you like star Wars. I didn't, you know, or whatever. And, and, or you like shape of water and I didn't or something. And, and that's it. Then you just go home and you get dinner and you, know, you just kind of go on. But like when people have a reader or a writer's group or um, a manager pass or a producer never get back to you, it's like, it, and it's like, Oh, you know, it's so devastating. It's like, you know, they're just people and it's just another reaction. And um, sometimes you might have expectations about, you know, wanting a reaction from like, say a contest or from a producer or from a colleague, you want that reaction to be, you know, the you know, you have expectations, but that's, that's also something that we, you know, as professionals, we want to keep developing, you know, a healthy sense of expectations and keep things in check and know that it's not the end of the world. If something doesn't, cause you can all, as a writer, writers always, you know, there's always another movie. There's always another great idea. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I get so worked up and then, you know, and then, I, you know, I come across another thing. It's so incredible. And I go, and I'm so excited about the idea of writing it. And I go, you know, and it makes you free of everything else, you know. So lower your expectations and realize everything is, um, you know, everything's coming from a personal, their own personal place. And just remember that, you know, how many times you've gone to the theater and walked out with divided reactions. And, and, and it's so perplexing sometimes, you know, like, what do you mean you didn't like that? You know? And it's like, no, I didn't. And it's like, okay. You know, and, and it's just, that's what makes everything kind of fun. You know, that's what makes it the storytelling, you know, interesting, I think. Yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of that episode of Seinfeld um, where, where uh, Mr. Peterman, uh, he didn't like, he, he said to, he went, to, he took Engl- uh, Elaine to see the English patient and she hated it and he actually <laughs> fired her. And, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it, it's yeah. so funny because, you know, not only does that speak of character within Seinfeld, but it's also, I mean, you know, that's comedy because it, it's the ordinary that's brought up to the extraordinary because it's so yeah. ludicrous that, that a boss yeah. would fire an employee because did, she didn't like the right. same movie as him. <laughs> Right. And that, but that's how impassioned we are. That's how emotional we are about our decisions and our reactions. But as a writer, you know, it's, it's like, yeah. And a lot of people get, get really hung up on, you know, and, and, you know, blue cat gives out feedback and, you know, and there's, there's going to always be somebody who's going to be like, this person, you know, didn't, um, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, that's, a, it's going to happen. You know, it's not a perfect process. You know, it's not math not two plus two equals four it's just not we're not doing that and not when like some people watch call me by your name and have one reaction and other people i talked to a guy last night who walked out you know he just thought it was too slow and other people think it's a masterpiece you know so and both of everybody's right i mean you know love lies it was a movie i wrote it came out a long time ago it was reviewed in the you know and people some of you know it came out in theater so it was reviewed by the press and and, you know, I realized then it was like the people that just thought it wasn't even worthy of a short. They just thought it was just crap. You know, I, I'd be like, oh, my God, you know. And then and the, but then the people were like, oh, this is like a this is a, this is genius. And I realized it's like they're both sort of wrong and right. You know what I mean? Like, I can't go to the genius people, people that think it was a mass meeting. Well, you're right. That's a good review. You know what you're talking about. The person who doesn't like it. It's like, no, they're both right you know they're both like somebody who likes something really like oh my god this is incredible they're as crazy as the person that says something's horrible you know what i mean they're just it's just it's you know it's all emotional response and personal history and you know it's it's um but i mean i hope you know if anything it's like i i always i'm glad i think it when people when writers can like really look past that because it really frees you up you know you realize it's like it keeps you going 
And I think it gets you back to focusing on developing a better story instead of just focusing on reactions and all that stuff. So, Yeah, and, and you, you hit the nail on the head too, Gordy, when you said – uh, about you know this whole idea of story because I think too many times when, when you I mean there, there's 10,000 screenwriting books out there and the problem is you start to read some of these and it's all about a formula you know what I mean it's it's the precise right. you know and it is like you said it's not math but some of those books though they, they treat it as such where it's like on page this on page that this has to happen and blah 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 and then you start to get just lost in this and that's why I think I mean you you must see it a lot where you're kind of like this feels like they're not really writing a story but they're trying to solve like a like a math problem. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there was a really there was a period of time where people were Save the Cat was sort of, you know, I mean, um with all credit to Save the Cat and and the and the principles that the really healthy story principles that it um, so that it affirms and everything. And there was a period where it was like, you know, maybe 10 years ago where it was like, everybody was like, you know, really ablaze with that. And people were using it left and right. And, and scripts, some of the scripts were just incoherent because they were just, they weren't even, they, they had lost all sense. They weren't even connected to their own story, intuitive um, sort of compass inside. And so they were like, well, this is what the character is supposed to do on this page. And it was like, but then when you'd read it, you'd be like, I don't even know what's going on, you know? And, and, you, and the emotional thing wasn't happening and everything else. So yeah, you, 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 you know, you kind of look for, you, you can, you know, the books are great. And if you get stuff that inspires you, incredible. If you get something that makes sense, it's great. A teacher, an analyst, um, a consultant, you know, it could be the guy, some guy you meet at Starbucks who says, oh, I want to read your script or some, the barista, you know, anybody wants to, you know, oh, I'll read it, you know, and then they go, I just didn't think, I mean, I've gotten notes from everywhere, you know what I mean? And it just doesn't, there's no, there's no um, bad source of notes. It's just the ones that actually help you move forward and know that. But yeah, you have to strike a balance between what the, what formulas, what, kind of this is what this is the third act you know whatever and knowing that the only rule of storytelling is emotional investment and getting an audience to care i mean you know i mean good example call me by your name i mean i don't know what formula that followed or like act structure or anything like that i don't know i don't know where a phantom thread you know you can't i don't know what <laughs> i mean i i mean i I'd have to probably watch it again or a couple more times to see, but I'm sure that Paul Thomas Anderson did not, you know, was not even thinking about that. He was just telling an emotional story, creating characters that he thought an audience would be in, interested in and invested in emotionally. And that is what drives that. That's what drives effective storytelling. That's what, that's what drives classic movies making and that's what that's what drives profit in the marketplace is emotion. I mean, Wonder Woman was Wonder Woman because people loved Wonder Woman and they were so gratified by her performance, who she was. We were able to connect with her. It was like, oh, you know, and it's, you know, and so this this happens. Whereas like, you know, the thing with Star Wars, it's like there was some mixed reactions out there. We can all kind of safely say. And some people were like, I am not, and basically boiled down to, I am not feeling Luke Skywalker. I do not, I'm like, I've lost my connection with Luke Skywalker. That's really what happened. It's <laughs> like, it's like they did something else with Luke and made some choices about the story. And that's what happened. You can't, I don't think anyone can deny that there was an emotional breakdown with some of the audience because of who they knew Luke Skywalker to be. So anyway, so it's all emotional investment. And so as long as we can remember that when we're, um, when we're writing, I mean, just, just, you know, make a balance between you can read stuff inspired, get you thinking about things, get you thinking about conflict and tone and, and things like this, you know, you get, you, it's good to think about these things and, study them and look at other movies and how they function and everything else. But don't forget that eight year old child that knew how to tell a story. You know what I mean? You can, you can, you can go to a 10 year old and go, what happened after school today? 
and they'll tell you a story. They'll know what a beginning, middle, and end is. They know what the inciting incident is. They know what the payoff is. They know what the ending is. You know, and they, they, they know what that is. It's in their bloodstream. It's in their DNA. And so as we, go, we, we want to strike a balance between what we learn and what we already know, you know? Yeah, yeah you know, and uh, somebody once told me about st- kids storytellers that one of the main reason that they're, they actually become such good storytellers is, be, is because they, they're not afraid to fail. And they're, you know, they're not really concerned about <laughs> that. And they just sort of, they just yeah. go in full force on that story. And, and it's not until you start, you know, going through, you know, your, your young adult life or, or what have you, you start to go, oh my God, the peer pressure. Oh my God, what if I look, don't, you know, what if somebody thinks I'm an idiot? Uh, what if this isn't good? I suck. Then if this sucks, you know what I mean? Right. Right. There is definitely a, definitely an open, open feeling about what they're doing and everything else. Absolutely. So, and, and by the way, I know you mentioned um, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. You know, I, I actually saw your uh, AMA on, on Reddit, Gordy, and I, <laughs> I laughed when you, you when somebody asked, are you the Gordy that, that Paul Thomas Anderson thanked at the end of The Master? And you just responded back with the, uh, the uh, Heisenberg uh, meme of, you're damn right. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it was funny. As, it was, I remember that. I think I was, I had an intern in the office and he was like, no, let me get this. <laughs> and he, and he, and I was like, okay, just put it up there. You know, he was, he thought that was funny <laughs> or somebody was, somebody in our office was like, yeah, he kind of grabbed them, that meme and put that up there. Yeah. I was, uh, I was, I looked at the master a little bit along the way, the script and, and um, you know, I'm for obviously, you know, Paul was very close to my brother and um, they were like best friends and, like literally brothers in their own right, you know, and, and so we're very, been very close to Paul for, um, for 20, you know, over 20 years. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I saw, you know, the Boogie Nights. I mean, my brother was telling me about Boogie. Not, I gave, I gave my brother Love Lies in the fall of 96. And that was when he was shooting Boogie Nights. And he was telling me about this movie that he was making about the porn industry, you know? So it's, so I've known, you know, Paul, he's amazing. He's so he really is our best. He's really the best we have, you know, in America. I mean, he's just, he's like a Kubrick level genius and he's going to be, I mean, the best is yet to come. I mean, he's going to phantom thread totally says that, you know, he's going to different places. He's going to be, he's going to, everything is going to, he's going to make so many great movies. And then, you know, in the next, second half of his life, it's really exciting. But um, yeah, I'm very honored. And he's always been very, such a, such a humble, he's always very respectful of me. And, you know, he's always been respectful of me and he always, he, he likes my judgment and he, he's just a great guy. You know, I mean, he's a wonderful man too. He's a good guy. So, you know, as we were talking about, you know, directors and, and giving notes and stuff like that. So, you know, in your experiences and working with him, you know, it, it, does he sort of have that sort of same mentality where, you know, it's it's not so much of, hey, listen to me because I'm the director, but it's more of like he knows how to collaborate, the, you know, the, the right way. Because um, I've had people on here who've worked with like Quentin Tarantino, and that's one of the things they say was his strengths was, was that, you know, he would get into this groove and they always knew when he liked stuff because he would start, you know, laughing and stuff like that and 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 you know they yeah. they, they knew his vibe does, does paul thomas anderson i've kind of... not i've not i've not been on the set with paul so i can't really speak to him as a director and mm-hmm. like what that is but i mean you know so i just all i can say is from my vantage point you know he obviously knows how to cast he knows how to direct an ensemble of actors and and bring them together in the scene um you know he's very very gifted i mean it, it, it it's he does so many things well. People just don't understand that he, he, you know, he's writing on a certain level that is highly original and authentic, emotionally authentic. And his, he delivers high conflict. He never, he doesn't run from emotional, emotional beats and, and high, highly intense emotional situations. Um, you know, he knows how to cast. He has an incredible, he has a Shakespearean sense of comedy um, and how he balances comedy in his stories. So, I mean, you know, you're eliminating, I mean, just in what I just said, you're eliminating like several major directors that are in this country around the world that can't do all of those things. They do not do all of those things. 
They can't, they can't do all that. You go on. You're not even talking about, you know, where he puts the camera. <laughs> you're not even talking, you're not even talking about how he employs score and sound. I mean, it's, 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 it's off the charts. So it's like, he has so much of that covered. He's literally like, I mean, to me, I mean, I, I, you know, obviously, you know, am I biased? I, you know, whatever. But the fact is, is that it's like, <laughs> I mean, anyone who knows anything, I think probably would agree with me, but he is one of our, he is, he is the master. I mean, he is one of the greats, um, you know, and by the time it's all done, I mean, he's, cause he's going to keep going. He's a young man and he's going to keep going and he's, he's got all his faculties and phantom thread was such a, um, such a step forward. I thought in so many, I mean, it was such a mature, there was something so much sure about the movie and it was a real, real achievement. And, you know, and obviously the Academy, you know, agrees because they, they nom- not only nominated the movie best picture, but also nominated him for directing. And, um, and I think that that was uh, well-deserved. They know it. They know that it was, it was, it was truly, it was truly an achievement and um, really, really wonderful to see. So. It, you know, Gordy, I, I, that's that's actually one of the movies I, I I went to see this year. Um, I haven't actually been, uh, you know, either it wasn't playing at the time uh, I went, or I, I you know I haven't been able to sort of schedule time to go see. It just it. came out. I mean, it just came out. I mean, it it, it just came out. For like, I mean, in L.A., it's been out since the end of the year, end of 2017. But it just was released, I think, last weekend. Um, a lot of places. So a lot of people have not caught up to that one yet. So, you know, but so, yeah. So, but everyone will get a chance to take it in, but I encourage every, all writers to, um, to look at that, you know, to, to go, to go to that movie and, and think about what, what is successful and what is, what is effective about the story telling in the movie and, and, and take it in. And I think you'll, you know, it's a good, it's a really great movie for screenwriters. You know that was my mistake, Woody. I actually thought it came out like end of November, beginning of December last year. Um, so, but but no, it didn't. It, yeah, no, I was just gonna say I I, I I sometimes I get like release dates all mixed up, you know. And uh, but no, yeah, yeah. But but you know you, you made a good point. I want to I want to actually ask about it, is you know when, when you're a screenwriter. You know, um, some of the you know the the ideas of of becoming a better screenwriter are you know you you have, you have to read a lot of screenplays, and obviously you have to go to different movies. Um, do you feel that there's ever like an advantage one over the other? Because I, I one time went to a screenwriting seminar and the person said, you can't judge a, uh, you can't watch a movie and try to dissect it that way because, uh, you don't know what the script even looked like. You know, they, actors could be improvising, you know, this scene could blah, 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 blah. And, and I wanted to ask, you know, Gordy, what, what do you think of that advice? Um, well, I mean, the fact is, is that, you know, that sounds, I mean, it sounds like uh, a fairly reasonable point, but the fact is this screenplay is, is it's, it's part of making the film. And I think that ultimately, cause there's a lot of scripts that, you know, so you're, so you can't judge the script. Well, if the script, you know, it doesn't matter in the end, we need our audience. We're not writing scripts, you know, we're right. We're, we're trying to make a movie. You know, so, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think ultimately it's, it's yeah, that sounds like, okay, well, you can't judge the movie based off of this. Uh, you, are, are you saying you can't judge the screenplay based off of the movie that we've just seen? Yeah, that, that, that's what they, they were saying was because. Um... Okay, I think generally, I think generally, I mean, I think, I'm sure there's exceptions where people, you know, drop the ball or the money doesn't happen or there's bad performances or you know, whatever, there's a, probably a number of reasons, but I think it generally, you know, strong writing, you know, tends to reflect in a strong movie. It's, it's very difficult to make a great movie from a mediocre script. It just, you know, it's just difficult. They are very much correlated. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of variance there. And um, yeah, so, 
An interesting question, though. I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I always like going and, 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 you know, just interviewing people like you, Gordy, just, just, you know, people out there in the field. And, and you know, that's why I want to do this podcast, because I get to hear all these different different takes on different things. You know what I mean? And you get to share yeah. knowledge, because I think that's what technology has done. I mean, honestly, you know, once I started, it's, it's kind of I kind of had my aha moment, you know, with, with all this technology and, and the way media is the way it is now. You know that's that's what it is. It's it's sharing knowledge and communicating with each other just a lot faster and on a much now it's on a global scale because I don't know if there's anybody on this planet anymore that you can't talk to if you want to. Right. But uh, but and, and of course we've seen with movies. You know now it's you know it, you know you can put them on Netflix, Hulu, all that good stuff, and then you can you know. That also right. is is distribution, but but uh, I wanted to get back to to you, Gordy, just talking about you know your career and everything. You know, you, you you've actually you know directed a few movies, you've written a few movies. So I just actually wanted to ask you about some of those and some of your experiences actually making those. So you know, your your first movie, uh, as you uh, as you mentioned earlier, was Love Liza. So you know, I wanted to ask, you know, where where was the impetus for writing that screenplay, and how did you uh, go about being able to to direct that movie? I didn't direct it. Todd oh, Malazzo directed it. Yeah, I wrote it, um, and I was a, I was a cab driver in Chicago, and I saw somebody near a gas pump, and I was like, I was like, is that person sniffing the gas? And I didn't really see them sniffing it, but I was like, and I was in my cab, and I wrote that down on an index card. I used to have all these blank index cards with me. I wonder where those are. I like. I, w- I wish I could find them. I wonder where they ended up. But I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I had like, yeah, I've got like uh, to find some of that stuff. Anyways, um, yeah, I wrote down a man starts huffing gas, and and you know, and then that was the germ of it, where I was like, well, why would he start doing that? And it's just like, well, what if his wife committed suicide? And then I started to write that, and then he finds a note. And I found that I didn't plan on that. He finds the note, and the note ended up driving the movie. But that's where Love Liza came from. So you know, uh, I, sometimes when I find pieces of material that I've like written on an index card or back of a receipt or something, I'll look at it, Gordy, and I go, "What the hell was I trying to say here?" Like, what yeah, that? yeah, that doesn't happen to me too much anymore. But sometimes, yeah, I'm like, I'll look back on something, and I'll write down a little idea file. Usually I, write, I get I get the idea and I put it on like a little document and I just, you know, I have so many of them. and, and, and But I usually, I know myself that I better explain it so that I can look back on it and know exactly what it is. Because if I just write down macaroni and cheese, it's like, I'm like, what the hell was that idea? <laughs> you know, you got to like, what's like, uh, what was that? It's like, so, yeah. But uh, I, I, I think we've all had that experience of looking back at something we jotted down and been like, okay, I guess that one's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've gotten into the habit of uh, of using my phone now. I use uh, I use like Evernote to to take down oh, ideas yeah. because it, it helps you organize yeah. things and also you're not like carrying around yeah. your, uh, tons of sheets of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's That's electronic, you know, that's the technology that we have now is that yeah you don't really have index cards anymore you just i just usually just write an email to myself send it to myself and then it ends up on my little movie uh folder idea list for the year and then uh and i'm backing it up every couple of days the whole computer so i gotta make sure i have everything so it's all it's all different from back in the days 20 years ago when i came up with the idea for love liza and I find it interesting too, Gordy. You were you were a cab driver in Chicago, and you were just you know I guess in between fares, you were just you know on index cards, you were just sort of outlining or brainstorming ideas that you could put into a screenplay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean that's the I mean you know I just that was what I was doing, and I you know to this day it's like you know I mean you know it's like anywhere an idea will come up, but at that time you know that's what we, that's what my day job was. It was a it's a whole nother experience, you know, and I drove a cab in Chicago for three and a half years and, and, um, and that was, yeah, I can still remember exactly the gas station that that happened in. And it was just one of the random things. It was like, and, and, and I just decided to go with it. You know, it was an idea. And I, you know, I just remember that it's like, sometimes you sit there and go, okay, what idea should I work on? And, and, you know, any idea that you pick, you're going to make great. 
You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, I'm like, don't be so worried about whether or not this is the right idea because you're going to work on it and it's going to be awesome. You know what I mean? So you'll make everyone, everything work. And so it's like, it's such a, and I forget that because I'll, I'll be like, well, you know, like, I don't know. And it's like, even because if I was forced to write my worst idea, I would, I would make it great. You know what I mean? I would just be like, the one I'd be like, okay, I got to write on that. And then I would lean into it and I would start to, you know, my imagination would kick in and I'd start to come up with ideas. You know, Stephen Pressfield once said that uh, he, you could, if you can get like a sentence out, you can draw a whole novel just from that one sentence. You can pull just from that one Absolutely. sentence. Absolutely. And, and, and he said, the, Absolutely. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, Gordy. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say that uh, he actually wrote the Le- Legend of Bagger Vance just from that w- uh, one sentence. He had like this moment where he kind of jotted down the sentence and then he just pulled a whole novel from that. Right. I mean, you know, and that's, it's, you know, it's usually like one little idea, a few little words you jot down and then it's like the idea is there and, and, um, and then you're off to the races. And, but, you know, I've done that in classes too, where it's like, I have people, you know, brainstorm like 10 ideas for scenes. And then I ask them pick the worst idea out of all the ones. And that's the one I have them write on. And to show them that basically any, anything, you can make anything work. You know, you do not have to, it does not have to be the best idea. It does not have to be, I mean, that's really why for any kind of writing challenges, any kind of 48 hour film, that's where that comes from. It's because it, for, it, 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 it's what people can, given, given restrictions, you know, they can still have fun and be creative and everything else. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's, I think it's just when you're having fun, because I think that I think that's a, a lot of things that people forget. But I mean, I, I've been there too, Gordy, where I'm like, you know, I, I, I completely forget this is supposed to be fun. And it becomes like so deathly serious and you start kind of doubting yourself along the way. And then it becomes a little more, a little more. And then by the end, you're like, this whole thing sucks. I got to get rid of this whole screenplay. I got to throw it all over again. And then you and it, and it becomes a habit that you ha- that you have to break. Well, every, every screenplay, you know, it's like, you know, any kind of master screenwriter or filmmaker, you know, will tell you it's like anything you're working on, you're going to get to a wall. You're going to get to a place where you're like, this is awful and I'm bored as hell and I want to start something else. And there's, this has so many problems and I don't know how to solve them. And I'm, and this is like taking forever, you know, I mean, it's true despair. And, and the thing is now I know that like when I get to that place, I'm like, okay, I'm making that way. <laughs> like, I know it's like, okay, I'm actually halfway through, you know, like, because you are always going to hit that spot and it's like, and you are, you never get, oh man, this is like a, this is so awesome. You know, it's never like that. You always get to a place where like, I'm, I hate every page. I'm like all this stuff. I'm sick of reading this thing. I'm like, you have that feeling. And it's like, and that, and, and when you have that feeling, it's like, oh, well, you're getting there. You're almost, you're, you're probably rounding second. Just keep going. And then suddenly it will come back and you'll fall in love with it again. And you'll come up with new ideas and your problem, your, you know, solve these problems and you'll have another draft and then you'll start and then you'll be like, okay, and you'll own it all over again. And then you'll really have something special, but we have to fight through, you know, the boredom, the despair, um, you know, just the, just the, the loathing of the script, you know, how at times it comes up where you're just like, Oh God, like, I'm so sick of looking at this and thinking about it. I think it sucks you know, or whatever. And, uh, you know, you're like four drafts in, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just Nightmare. yeah, just even in the like, the outlining stages, you know, sometimes you're like, oh my god, what the hell, what, what the hell was I thinking? And uh, you know, yeah, I, I, one of the things that I, I've learned too over the years is just like little tips and or, or so to speak, or if you want to call them a hack, uh, you know, that, that's a popular word now, Gordy, hack. So <laughs> so everything's a yeah. hack. So it's, uh, one thing I've learned is uh, is if you to, to start an argument. Uh, you know, have one, you know, obviously that's where conflict comes from, right? I want a, uh, you want a, and, uh, we each have a different way of how we're going to get it or maybe, you know what I mean? And then we each, but we both need this thing. 
And that's where this conflict comes from is that, you know, there, you want something and you can't get it. I want something and I can't get it. So if you start, a, you know, starting an argument and, and, and that's why I make like little notes where I'm going back through stuff and just saying to myself, this is, you know, maybe this is something that I can do better. And then, you know, like Stephen King once said, if you, if you take a draft of something, put it in your drawer for two weeks or whatever, go back to it. And that's when you can look at it again with fresh eyes. Yeah, it's great how time changes things and you can look at stuff and be like, oh, yeah, you know, and you could definitely, you know, there's a lot of that stuff. But, that's it, yeah, that's great advice. So, you know, Gordy, as you took Love, Liza, and you were able to write a full screenplay, you know, how how did you go about, you know, uh, just sort of even pitching it and, and, you know, getting it into the right hands to get it produced? Um. Well... You know, it was a long process, but, you know, my brother read it. And like I said, he had not started shooting Boogie Nights yet. So he wasn't a movie star or anything like that. He just young and um, he read it and he loved it, you know, and I didn't, wasn't giving it to him to be like, Hey, you want to do this? But he wanted to play the guy. And, um, and that's what it is. So we attached, he was attached. We got a director, we got Todd Belizo, and then we started to, couple of producers and then we started to um talk to people that could add access to money and uh find you know producers that you know could raise raise actually the money to make the movie and so it took a uh you know it didn't take that long maybe four years from from like the whole period of like starting to think about it and people looking at it you know and then and then, um, then we found some folks and, um, and made it, you know, and got, was able to get Kathy Bates involved. And, um, and that was how we, we got the money. It was very low budget, um, at the time. And, um, and then, you know, it got into Sundance, you know, people, um, responded at Sundance to it and it got to Sundance and, um, and then it was bought by Sony Classics. Um, and they, uh, distributed it. So, um, yeah, so that was, that's sort of the journey. And I think it's, I mean, somebody told me it's on HBO right now. So I think if you have HBO, you'll be able to watch it. And obviously it's on Amazon for rental, but it's, um, but Sony ended up, uh, Sony classics, the same guys that were involved with love lives are, you know, are still running. Sony Classics, you know, and uh, Call Me By Your Name is a Sony Classics uh, acquisition that they picked up before Sundance. And, um, yeah. So, you know, Gordy, you mentioned Sundance and, and you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Call Me By Your Name and uh, also, you know, with, with Love, Liza. Um, I, I saw an article, and I don't know if you saw this yet, in the L.A. Times that says the, uh, the spec script is dead. And what they mean is, is that Hollywood only wants to make the big budget blockbuster movies, you know, based on, you know, superheroes and, and things like that or or remakes of classic movies and stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, and, and that the spec scripts now all go to Sundance. So if you want to make an original movie, you, you know, the, the place to debut it or show it and, and get it bought, et cetera, is, is Sundance. You know, I, I don't know if you read that article um, but, but do you, do you agree with that in today's current market for screenwriters that, you know, Sundance is, is where, you know, independent movies really go? Well, I mean, Sundance is an incredible market. I mean, it, 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 you get into Sundance, I mean, all eyeballs are there for acquisitions and you can, you know, pick up a movie that can do considerable, uh, performance at the box office and also could win academy awards so it, it, it you know obviously it's an it's a great launch pad now you know i mean look if you write a great screenplay you know you're gonna be able to do a lot of things you know and and that's never going to change the idea of yeah the um what was happening in the 90s the markets changed there's uh the you know how they but you know but the nineties were also different from the forties, you know what I mean? So it, it, it's not like some, you know, like some evil thing has happened. It's just the market changed. Storytellers can go different places, but you obviously can, you know, if you write something special 
you know, you might be able to get, you know, involved in television and television episodic is obviously sort of the, there's another golden age um, uh, right now in terms of, you know, storytelling and, and television, but, you know, but then you can also, you know, write a get out or write a ladybird. Obviously these people have access and everything and there's certain, you know, opportunities that might have been afforded Greta Gerwig or whatever. But the fact is, is that, you know, three billboards, you know, these are all movies that are doing, doing well. They're going to do well. No one who is involved with making them is on, is like, wow, I wish I hadn't been involved to get out. I mean, it's like, no way. And get out was, you know, low, lower budget did not have any kind of like a Avengers type of budget. And it was, but it all goes back to the writing, you know, and it, it, you know, so just, you, you know, people find, you know, writers and people want to find like, oh, well, spec market or, you know, make some, you know, ideas about. And the bottom line is it's ultimately an excuse not to deal like to not to deal with the truth. The truth is, is that we have to do what we were talking about earlier. We have to fight through the boredom, the despair, keep working on our drafts and make them so good that it blows people away. I mean, I got my short got into Sundance two years ago and got me a job, a, like a feature writing job shortly thereafter. Um, and it was all because of the work that I put into the short. And I made the short as best I knew. I just made it as best I could. And, you know, and, and it worked. You know, it, it got into Sundance and people saw it and it landed, you know, it led to a really nice, um, you know, it, it helped, it can help my career and it moved everything forward. And, you know, somebody would be like, oh, well, how, you know, it didn't follow any kind of formula or anything else it, in terms of, I just decided to make, you know, I was like, I want to make the short to kind of show people I can direct and, and it ended up doing things that I did not anticipate or expect. And, but I, but the thing that I did plan on doing was making it as best I could. And so everybody, and I know people were like, yeah, well, whatever, you know, yeah, sure. Write it, work really hard in your, on your screenplays. That's a really great advice. Well, you know what? That's what happened. I mean, it's like, where do you think get out any of these movies, anything that's like comes out of nowhere, any, you know, anything that like, it's like interesting. Where do you think it comes from? It comes from people like picking up, you know, opening it up, getting going with their movie, working really hard on it, continuing to take notes, continuing to push it forward. That's, that's stuff that's never, that's, that has not changed, you know? And um, yeah, the idea, maybe it's a good thing that like, oh, you can't just put together a high concept and the, the movie, movie, you know, the, Studios are so scared somebody else is going to get it, so they buy something. And it's like sort of half-baked, and it's not even that great, and then you don't even get to really work on it after they bought it. I mean, you know, maybe that's not really what we want. <laughs> you know, maybe we want a system that is like, that is exactly like that. It's like, write a big sick. Write, write, write something like three billboards. Come up with something creative. Write, create a dramatic story write a really funny comedy, write a really scary horror movie and, and just make it the best you can, you know? And uh, I think the market's going to find you anyways. And it might be better than if they bought your high concept, you know, thing 15 years ago or 20 years ago and um, did, did that, you know? Yeah. And, and the movie you took to Sundance was Dog Bowl, correct? Yeah. Yeah, that was a short I had a couple of years ago that I that I had there. You know, uh, good. That's also that's on Amazon Prime. So if anybody, you know, wants to see it, it, it it's it's on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. And, and I'll make sure to link to that in the show notes as well. Um, so everyone... yeah, yeah, just you know, so if you're like you're like I want to see if this guy knows what he's talking about, I would see his crappy short. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go check out his short, and see if it's good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to check up on you, Gordy Hoffman. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta check up. You gotta watch Dog Bowl and man, see like, come on, man, check it out. It's nothing like you know, you go and check somebody's movie. You're like, oh man, he really? And anybody, but I think people are like Dog Bowl's good. It's got some nice, great actor. I mean, the star of it is excellent, and I think people enjoy it. 
Yeah, I, you know, I, I remember, um, you know, uh, I, I saw you were crowdfunding for that. And I just wanted to ask Gordy, um, you know, really quickly, you know, what, what were your experiences crowdfunding that movie? Did, did Was crowdfunding what you thought it would be or was it a little harder, a little easier? Oh, man, it's like, I mean, for somebody with low self-esteem, I mean, it is brutal. You got to, you got to like, you know what I mean? You got to ask people for stuff. It's like, ugh. I mean, it really, but you know what? It was like, I was, I, I you know, I, I, you know, I stumbled onto a lot of things that you do well with. I mean, it's a whole nother podcast, but you know, I, I, you know, I found my way through it and people, I had a lot of people that wanted to help me. And I, so I had a successful run and then I hadn't finished the script yet. And I, like, I raised all this money and I was like, Oh no, now this has to be good. And talk about pressure. I was like, Whoa. And, um, but then I, you know, then I kept, it was great. I mean, you know, I really made you committed to like making a great movie. Um, it was an excellent way to, to fund the movie. Um, it worked. I mean, yeah, I mean, think about all the Kickstarter campaigns or, crowdfunding campaigns you've been involved with and you know unfortunately for my backers you know they backed a film that went to Sundance you know so they were like they were like wow this is awesome and then it went and then it went you know played all over the country and you know so people were able to a lot of people that backed it were able to see it in a theater like at at a festival and and I was at a lot of those festivals so it was really it was super fun and and um but yeah, the Kickstarter was a lot of work. I mean, you know, it's, again, it's a whole other podcast, but you know, there's a lot, there's a few, few tips for that. But um, if you ever want to do a Kickstarter, uh, like, like, cause I did two campaigns with dog ball, one at the beginning, one at the end. And um, yeah, I've got a raft of experience about that. And I always, always want to share that. Cause I think there's a lot of things that people do and they can avoid and um, and I think it's a great way to find the money to make a short film and show people that you can write and show people you can direct. And, um, it, it, you know, I think it's Kickstarter is fantastic, but it, there are some things that I think people get, you know, and it, it usually goes ultimate, you know, in many ways it goes back to, um, you know, something that bogs writers down, bogs filmmakers down is a lack of patience. I think people are, impatient to launch their campaign they're impatient to shoot so they don't want to like do another draft they don't want to write another movie they they want to get to shooting and i think with kickstarter it's like you just kind of want to launch it you know you're like i want to yeah okay we're ready you know and then you launch it and you know you don't really have your ducks in a row you're not really ready and then all of a sudden it's like oh you know like i i'm like no one is no, I don't really, I'm not really getting the money I thought I was going to get, you know, and I think it, it goes back to having some patience and, um, you know, preparing and doing the right work and getting it all ready and doing exactly what you would do if you were, you know, wanting to shoot a script, you know, just taking the time to do it. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I crowdfunded way back when in like 2010 and then I did it again in 2011. And, you know, it, it was explaining to people what crowdfunding was at that time because, you know, not, you know, nowadays everybody has a Kickstarter, it seems. And I think some people get a little burned out. Right. But, but I mean, when you're actually doing it, Gordy, uh, I, I mean, I hear you. I, I was right there with you um, because it feels, you know, you're like, my God, is this thing even going to be possible? Um, you know, are people, you know, because everyone will tell you, what I what I usually do is, and this is really quick because I don't want to run out of time. I, I I call I call it the one percent rule, and so if you ask a hundred people to, to donate to your crowdfunding campaign, ninety nine everyone everyone's going to tell you yes, but ninety nine won't do it, and that one person will actually go through it and 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 give you some money. So if you use that one percent rule, that's what the that's the multiplication that you're going to have to do to make sure that you have your movie. So your multiplication and your, your, and your, your division. And then if you, you, you figure you have to tell that many people. So if you, you know that you're going to need maybe like, I don't know, uh, $20,000, uh, $20,000, you have to kind of can, you know, figure out how many people that you're going to have to talk to in order to, to, to get that done. Cause you know, everyone does what, what's called Chinese math. And they're like, well, if I had 20,000 people each give me a dollar, I'd have, I'd have them all the money or I need only need one person to give me $20,000. You know what I mean? I mean, so it's kind of like, you know, using all that to your advantage, you have to figure out, you know, okay, these are where I could go. These are the family. These are the friends. They can give me 30%. You know, it's, it's all stuff like that, that, you know, you've learned as you, as you go about doing all this stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with it, but I I think it, I mean, it boils down to content, how you present, you know, your idea, and I think there there's a lot of pitfalls with that. I think people think, oh, I should make a four minute video. No one in the world has ever watched a four minute video. No one watches four minute videos ever. It's like, you know, and it's like, let me explain it. Let me bring everybody in. Let's talk for seven minutes about what the movie's going to be about. Nobody nobody wants to watch that. You know, it's like, so there's these things that you sort of realize. It's like, you know, make a 45 second video, you know, and and like write a little bit about it. People want to read it. They're going to find it. But basically just give them a little video reminder. Make sure you have a ton of rewards. Make sure you have a lot of different ways for people to get in. If you only have one $25 award, and then the next one, $75, you're going to be in trouble, you know, but if you have five different $25 awards, you know, some people don't want DVDs, you know, they don't want a poster, you know, and it's like, if the only thing at that money level is a poster, then they're like, I don't want a poster, you know, but if you're like, oh, you know, I won't give you anything at $25, you get people signed up for that because they don't want anything mailed to them. You know, I mean, it's like, it's amazing. I mean, all these things that I sort of learned while I was doing it. Yeah, it's um, it's all the things it, you know. Speaking of the video, really quickly, I know we we're, we're almost out of time, but really, but I once had a friend of mine. He, he, his crowdfunding campaign was not going anywhere, and he said, "Could you, you know?" He goes, "Dave, I know you've done this before. Would you mind looking at this for me?" And I looked at it, and 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 Gordy, he had a uh, he had like a nine or ten minute uh, trailer, so to speak, and it was him talking on the couch. I said, "My God!" I said, "What could you pot?" There was no like other shots. There was no like footage of the movie or even concept art or the storyboard or nothing. Even the screenplay, for God's sakes, it was literally him on a couch talking for like ten minutes. And I said, "Dude, I know you, and I don't want to donate money to this." Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I, I learned that like right when I was doing it, they, I mean, somebody, I was reading a blog and somebody was like, we, we watched, we watched videos for six months. Like we just studied Kickstarter campaigns for six months. And I was like, wow. Okay. And they were like, and we ended up making a movie. We ended our video ended up being two minutes or a minute and a half or something like that. And they said, and we should have made it shorter. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, whoa. And so my, you know, my video is 70 seconds, I think. It's like a minute. And I made it like a deconstruct. I did like this. I just came up with a quick concept. I went out and shot it. And it was, it was a little bit slapped together, but it was like, I just, I was like, I'm going to sort of do the anti Kickstarter video and not really, it was different, but people loved the video, you know, and, and it was like, it was, it, people really responded to the video because it just reminded people like, Oh, Gordy's talented, he's funny or whatever, you know, they just had enough. And then, you know, so, and then I just, I, and I also believe I had a lot of rewards. I had creative rewards. They were funny to read and I had a ton of different ones. You know, not so many that people couldn't make a decision, but I just had a lot of a lot of ways for people to participate. And I also just remember that it's like, just remember, not everybody wants a DVD. And if you apply that principle to every war that you give, then you're going to come up with alternatives. And you'll be surprised that people will actually, they'll take the other thing and you'll be like, oh, <laughs> they don't even want a DVD or they don't even want a, a download or you know, they just want to this, you know, they want to actually have that or whatever. And, uh, but yeah, the videos, you know, I don't think I've ever watched a video. I mean, anything that's over, like literally, and every one you go on, they're always like four minutes long. Five, it's like, are you kidding me? I mean, no one watches, nobody, nobody watches that. Not even, you know, not that anyone related to them. Nobody, nobody watches. <laughs> you know, it's just too long, man. It's too long, dude. Okay. Come on, man. <laughs> the, the the best crowdfunding video I've ever seen, Gordy. This guy actually uh, pretended he was kidnapped, and the they filmed it, and he was actually no, that's good. and and his guys were like, "Well, you know, you need that's this good. money," and he would goes, "Well, I, I'll I'll get it," and they're like, "Who's going to give you this money?" He's like, I'll, "I'll go to crowd, I'll go to Kickstarter," and I, or Indiegogo, and he goes, I, "I'll I'll ask for money on that," and he goes, well, "They go, 
really you can do that and they that was the pitch and uh it was actually it tied into the movie as well because it was about a kidnapping so it was actually pretty cu- creative and it was the uh the body by Kenny G um not not the musician by the way it was <laughs> but it was another uh another Kenny G but um uh, but but I'll, I'll link to that everyone in the show notes but it was actually a really really good uh good crowdfunding campaign and um he ended up making the movie but uh but you know Gordy I know we're running out of time um, I, I just in closing, Gordy, uh, I just want to talk about Blue Cat again. Um, I know Blue Cat, uh, it's open for submissions right now for the 2018 season. Um, so if you could, you know, just in the, in the few minutes we have left, uh, you, could you just, you know, give us uh, a little more information about Blue Cat? Um, well, everybody should know that we have really great readers and we provide written analysis on every script that enters. So if you enter Blue Cat, you will get notes back. On your script, Google would read your entire script, and you will get notes back. So that's that's a lot of people still don't know about that, but Blue Cat's been doing that for, you know, over 15 years now. But that's 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 one of our traditions, and we do that as a part of the entry fee. Um, we accept features, shorts, pilots, both hour and half hour, and we are also accepting short films this year. The first time we've ever done that, so we're going to have a screening next June of the top short films that we receive. Um, the deadline's February 20th. Um, and uh, the next, I'm not sure when you're airing this, but February 20th is the, is the next, um, is the final deadline. And, you know, you can Google us and I'm sure you guys will have the links for that. But um, yeah, I mean, and if you're ready to submit, you'd like to get some notes, Blue Cat's great for that. If you've got, if you're really, really excited about your script, please send it to us. If you're still, like knowing you needed to work on it, then work on it. Send it to Nichols or Austin later on in the year, and you can you can get back to us in the future. But um, you know, just use Blue Cat, use screenplay contests to you know to help you and encourage you um, to develop yourself. And and only when that happens, you know, should you be using screenplay contests. Um, but yeah, we're really excited. We you know we have a great. Um, such a fantastic group of readers. So I'm very proud of them and, and, uh, and everyone really loves our feedback. So, you know, um, looking, re- looking forward to meeting the next winner and, um, you know, the next winners and, uh, and yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting your scripts. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, I've entered group blue cap before and, uh, I really like the feedback that I got. And uh, like I said, Gordy, you're somebody I've, I've wanted to have on here before uh, because you have you have the right, you know, attitude, the personality to run a screenwriting competition. Uh, you're, you're you're not only the the founder, but you're also like this brand ambassador for it. And you know, you have that right attitude for it, man. And uh, I and uh, you know it, that's why it's so cool having you on, Gordy. Because every interview, you you know what I mean. It's like you're the type of guy like nothing bothers you. You know what I mean. You're just like you you just go with the flow. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, man. I you know, hopefully I can remember that sometimes when I'm in tra- traffic out in Los Angeles, but yeah, I, 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 uh, look forward to being back on again, man. It was a great talk. Uh, I could, we could probably keep going. I mean, so if you ever want me back on, I'd love to talk about anything you you know, want to get into. There's a lot of stuff in the just a great interview. Um, and love having, love being on. Oh, and, and I'd love to have you back on, Gordy. And and, and before we, uh, we we sort of cut this off, um, wh- where can people find you at online? Um, well, you can find me if you Google. You can find my probably my Instagram account and my, you know, I don't really tweet a lot, but I do have a Twitter account. And, um, you know, you can reach out to me through Blue Cat. Um, it's pretty easy to find Blue Cat. And um, you can reach out to me there and stuff. And I'm also... You know, one of the things that we do where I, there's a lot of interaction is we have um, something called the Blue Cat Writers Group, and that's on Facebook. And it's a closed group, but pretty much anyone who wants to join just gets approved. And we always have weekly discussion questions. And, you know, there's a lot of interaction, and it's very positive, and um, it's not overwhelming, and there's not a lot of, you know, extra stuff in there. It's really you know, it's really about the craft of writing and sort of give and take around that. So that's another place that people can find me. And I'll, I'll make sure everyone to link uh, to all of Gordy's uh, social media links in the show notes at DaveBullis.com. Twitter, it's at Dave underscore Bullis. And the podcast is at DB Podcast. I'm a lot more active on there, as most of you know, uh, at DB Podcast. But uh, Gordy Hoffman, 
man, it, it has been a blast talking to you, and I definitely would like to have you back on because we, you know, like I like we were just saying, you know, we could we could talk for another whole another hour or two. Right. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Dave. Find Dave at DaveBullis.com. Please make sure to subscribe and share the podcast.